We've been investing in property for a long time. And despite that, we're still far from perfect. But along the way, we have improved. There's a lot we've done to get better. And in this video, we're going to share with you five of the things that we've done to become better property investors. Okay, number one is I got really clear on what I wanted. That then dictated to, to me the strategy I should be undertaking and therefore the investments I should be making. What I don't do is I don't make wrong investment decisions. I have a very clear criteria on the type of properties I'm investing in and actually the areas I want to invest in as well. So by getting very clear on what I want, it allows me to become a far more effective investor. So next one, and this is definitely one for both of us, is outsourcing. When I started to outsource pretty much every aspect of my life, things improved because it allowed me to concentrate and focus on the things that I do best. And it's exactly the same with property. I don't particularly like property management. It's too much hassle, takes too much of my time. I'm not really interested. But it goes beyond that as well. Because I built up a network of sources, they were the people who introduced me to the deal. So I didn't have to be the person going knocking on doors. I skipped that phase and just researched the deals, which I much, much prefer analyzing them, looking at the data and making a decision that way. So I outsourced two key aspects of my property investment journey and it's massively improved my experience with property and also other areas of my life. Something else that I've not really talked about before, but has made a huge impact for me uh, as a property investor is I got really clued up on economics. Didn't read a book, I mean really, really threw myself into it to understand how the economy works, how the wider economy works ac across the planet, because it allows me to see patterns, trends, invest more wisely, just really understand economics from a property level. Yes, of course, that's important. But more importantly, the wider economy, because that actually is what affects property in the end. Okay, well, number four, uh, which is the first one I'm going to talk about, links into that really nicely, uh, which is the 18-year property cycle. Yes, I can hear people falling out of their chairs with shock that the 18-year property cycle was an important revelation. But the important thing about the cycle for me was a couple of things. First of all, it kind of showed that what happens isn't just random. You can forget the 18-year part. That doesn't really matter. You can argue about how long the cycle is, but just look at it and go, oh, yeah, well, property is cyclical. And you can see where it's happened before. You, and you can see just by looking at the world around you where you are now. And also, at some point, if things seem to be going well, it's not going to keep going well forever. There is going to be some kind of correction. Therefore, I can prepare for it. And it just gave me a lot more clarity and confidence. And also, probably more importantly than that, it made a real difference to the kind of thing I bought and where I bought. Because the other thing is it shows you that there isn't a property market. There are multiple property markets. So the UK is obviously made up of lots of different cities. They all move at somewhat the same kind of pace through the cycle because they are subject to the same kind of national forces. But then there's so much other stuff going on as well. So you can get some cities that seem to be just ramping up for their boom, while others have already had it and maybe are plateauing or coming down a little bit. And also location within city and the property type is so, so important. Okay, then the fifth and final thing, something that I did to become a better property investor was get comfortable with risk. And risk is something that obviously people when they're starting out are very concerned about because it involves large amounts of money and you're subject to these broader economic forces that you don't really have any control over. That is a scary thing. And obviously I'm somewhat comfortable with risk naturally because I invested in the first place. But when it came to property deals, I always used to procrastinate a lot and only take deals that seemed absolutely flawless after researching them intensely. So I would do absolutely loads and loads and loads of research and if I found any reason not to invest then I wouldn't. Now in a way that was brilliant because I didn't make any mistakes but the flip side of that was that I also missed out on a lot of opportunities and that's something that I've got a lot better at. I've got a lot more comfortable with weighing up the upside and the downside and going, okay, well, you know, what's the worst case? What could happen with this investment? What could mess it up? There's this little niggle that I'm having. What effect could that have? And then look at the upside and ultimately realize that, you know, if everything goes horribly wrong, there's always something you can do. There's always a way to, to get rid or find alternative use for it or take more calculated risks. And we'd also love to know what you've done to become a better property investor. So if you're not a regular user of the Property Hub forum, then you really should be because there's a load of amazing stuff going on in there. Get involved, share what's worked for you so we can all learn from each other. So there you have it. 
But before you go, make sure you subscribe. Or if you're a keynote when it comes to property, check out The Property Podcast, one of the UK's most popular business podcasts.